Uh, so the first one is to go with God. In other words, as you leave Cornell, don't just go like by yourself out to face the world and to be a success, you know, just by yourself. But go knowing that God goes with you. And, and uh, so go with God, because God will go with you if you are allowing Him to be a part of your life. So if you are God's child, a follower of Christ, then God promises to be with you. In Joshua 1.9 1, it says, uh, um, be, uh, Do not be afraid, be strong and of good courage. Uh, do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so uh, God had given Joshua a, a kind of a scary job or to lead the Jewish people into the promised land and to help them to, uh, to take the land. And so that was a big job he had ahead for him. And, and, uh, but God said, don't be afraid, I am going with you. And so the same is true for you as graduates as you go out uh, to your job or to more study or wherever you're going out into the world. Um, God will go with you, uh, especially if you are his child and you have you know, committed your life to him. You can have the confidence that he will go with you and you don't need to be afraid as you face the future, but you can have courage and strength from him. And if you've not yet made a commitment to follow Christ, or maybe some of you are Christians, but it's not necessarily you know, been your priority during the last recent time, then I encourage you to think of this time of transition as a time to just think about that and say, as I make this transition and go out into life, I want to make sure that I go with God and invite God to go with me. And I want to share just a story about one biblical character who was facing, not a graduation exactly, but it was an important time of transition where he was leaving one place and going to another. And it was also a spiritual turning point for him. And that's a, a man named Jacob, who was the grandson of Abraham. So he was leaving the land of his family, not for a good reason like graduation, but actually he had sort of cheated his brother out of the blessings, the family blessings of being the firstborn. He was, uh, uh, and so his brother was so angry with him, he wanted to kill him. So basically his mother said, you need to you know, run away to your relatives. And uh, Padam Era, which is like modern day Syria, that uh, it was some distance away from where they were. Uh, so he wasn't leaving for a good reason like graduation, but he was facing a major transition. He was leaving, moving to a place far away to kind of begin a new life. And up until that time, Jacob, although he was from a family with a strong uh, faith heritage, a strong godly heritage, he really had not been living for God. Uh, but this was a, a turning point for him as he, start, as he faced this uh, this, this change in his life, uh, his beginning a new life far away. And so as he left and he had gone one day journey and was sleeping for the night out in the uh, desert, I guess, um, looking up at the stars, he had a dream. Uh, and during that time, uh, God told him, I'll read from Genesis 28, uh, part of what God told him during that dream. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. So God basically told Jacob he had a special plan for Jacob's life and that he was going to be with him. He wasn't going to leave him until Jacob fulfilled that plan. And he brought him, he was now leaving his homeland to go far away, kind of like running away into exile. But God said, I'm going to bring you back to where you belong and I'm going to fulfill the purposes I have for your life. And so uh, God also has a, a plan for each of you as you, you know, move on from here. And uh, he will go with you to accomplish it if you open up your life to allow him to be a part of your life and to go with you. And let me read how Jacob responded uh, to what God told him. So remember, up until this time, Jacob really was not uh, living for God. But it says, Jacob made a vow, or a promise, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's house then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you gave me, I will give you a tenth. 
So Jacob made a kind of promise, a vow to God. He said, if you will be with me, as God just promised, then he said, I will. You know, it's still kind of a first step for him. It was still kind of conditional, tentative promise, but it was an important first step for him. And he says, if you are going to be with me, then I will, you know, I will, basically I will live for you and I will, I will give to you, you know, a portion of what you give to me. Uh, the, the tithe, things like giving back to God a tenth. So that was an important turning point for Jacob, and so I encourage you, this could be an important turning point for you. As you, It can be kind of scary to think about, okay, now the next step, and you don't know the future, and what's it going to be like, but you don't have to go alone. In fact, you shouldn't go alone. You need to take God with you, and he promises he will go with you if you will open up your life to make him, uh, invite him into your life, and to give him the you know, priority in your life. So I encourage you all to do that. Uh, as you go. So as you go, go with God, first of all. Second, trust in God. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is a very famous verse. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths, or He will make your paths straight. So in other words, in all your ways, that means in every decision you make, you know, every pl new place you move, every decision you make, whether it's a big decision about career or marriage or where you're going to work or where you're going to go to university, whether it's those big decisions or even small ones, because all those small things all fit into the puzzle to make the big thing. So whatever decision, don't just make it on your own. Don't just use your own wisdom. Don't only just ask your friends, although that could be a good idea to get advice to. But, but ask God. Pray to God. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. And if you do, He promises He will direct your paths. He will show you the way to go. It might not always be clear at the time, but if you trust in Him, He will guide you. And he will be, uh, one speaker I heard last week said that God is the master orchestrator. And, and this uh, person is now a very successful uh, person and um, a successful businessman, venture capitalist. But he, a lot of decisions in his life, he was a Christian, he was praying, but he didn't really know how it all fit together. But later he could see how God fit it all together to prepare him for the special way that he was going to be successful and make a contribution in this world. So God is the master orchestrator. So allow him to orchestrate your life. Acknowledge him in all your decisions and he will direct your paths. So first of all, go with God. Second, trust in God. And third, live for God. And I'll read you one more verse from 2 Corinthians 5 in the New Testament, verses 14 and 15. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So in other words, since Christ died for you, you should live for him. Right? He gave his life to save you, to save you from sin, to save you from guilt and punishment, so you can be restored to God's family, to, God, to relationship with God, and find the good plans and purposes that God has for you. He made that all possible by dying on the cross, uh, as a substitute to pay for your sins. So since he did that for you, since he died for you, Paul says, your response is that you should live for him who died for you. And so I encourage you, as you go, um, don't just live for yourself. You know, God does want you to be a success, and he's gifted you. He's brought you to a top you know, Ivy League school. You've gotten a great education. You're prepared to be a success in this world. And God does want you to be a success, but not just in a selfish way. He wants you to be a success to bless others. He wants you to be a success in a way that fits into his plan uh, for the big picture for what God's doing in the world. And so live for God and let him accomplish his purposes through you. And uh, he will, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he will allow you all to be successful, but, let, but live for God, not just for your own success. Yeah, so those are the three things I want to, you to remember as you graduate. First, go with God, not just go out by yourself, but go with God. Uh, trust in God and live for God. And so I hope that you can remember that as you graduate and take your next steps.